Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another video here. So I, I really, in this video here, I wanted to focus on the Rick Grimes and Michonne Grimes television show. And I, I really wanted to focus on some of the story elements here. I guess mostly for episode one, but there's also a couple of things that I think they need to explain in this first season because it's stuff that we've learned so far about like Rick's whereabouts, but they're not big story ideas to the point where, you know, the, they're going to play a big role in season two. It's stuff that we've seen throughout the the last couple of years since he left that they sort of need to address in the first season because otherwise it would just be yeah it would feel super weirdly out of place so anyways before we go any further obviously make sure to be a subscriber if you do want to get more walking to content like this tomorrow is september 1st it's uh i mean not tomorrow but i guess this friday technically on september 2nd it's going to be one more month exactly until the final episodes or the last episodes return right so i mean we're roughly almost four weeks away this sunday is going to be four weeks but expect a lot of stuff to start dropping now you know it seems like a lot of people kind of wait for september to roll around you know if there's stuff coming out for the fall and whatnot and i think the reason is because of if you're looking at it from like a marketing perspective like in august people's minds are are, are still on summer right you know but once it's september 1st that all changes people are returning from cottages coming back from their vacations and stuff school is starting for a lot of people this is where all that begins and honestly you probably see a lot of those memes online like as soon as it's september 1st all of a sudden, you're decked out in Halloween stuff. You're all about, like, pumpkins, pumpkin spice latte, which I actually have right in front of me right here. And so I think for The Walking Dead and for a lot of shows that premiere in October and, and just a lot of businesses that do stuff like that, I don't see there being a lot of promotion in August just because it's kind of, it's the summer. People are out doing a lot of stuff. They're not really watching TV that much. And so expect a lot more stuff. I mean, really starting tomorrow, I guess, technically, probably starting next week because obviously next week it'll be like three and a half weeks, three and, and whatever weeks until the, the show drops. There's going to be a lot more info in episode 17. There's going to be some new footage, sneak peeks, interviews, um, even some stuff on the spinoffs. Because I, I remember there was a rumor a few months ago that Norman Reedus was apparently going to be filming his spinoff this September. So if it does actually happen, then obviously we'll see that, which will be a lot of fun. Anyways, let's get into this. So the one thing I wanted to talk about, obviously, was the Rick and Michonne Grimes television show plot. And I have a few points here of things that I think they need to get into. And first of all, number one. And I've talked about this quite a bit. People have brought it up like, pretty recently. I think the first episode needs to be titled Years Gone By. And I think this episode needs to focus pretty much exclusively on Rick. Don't bring any other characters into it. I mean, I guess you could bring like Jadis because she was technically there. But I think this episode should really focus just on Rick and what he's been up to over the six years. And then by the end of the episode, they jump forward six years and then it's caught up with the current like storyline. And that's where you can introduce Michonne and stuff for episode two. And then everyone's just sort of caught up with everything. Like I, I really do think it's important to have that one episode focus just exclusively on Rick. Because the movies were supposed to be a thing. It was supposed to be Rick's story. And now the television show is going to focus a lot on Rick and Michonne. And that's totally fine. It makes sense. Obviously, Michonne's a lead character. When you know when Michonne and Rick were both on The, on the Walking Dead, they both got a lot of screen time. So it makes sense that you're going to do that. And honestly, story-wise, it actually makes the most sense to do something like that. I just think in order to bridge that time gap, in order to bridge those six years, you have to have that. Like, you have to have Rick just you know a standalone episode on him his immediate reaction to you know wherever the, the helicopter lands and just what's happening to him you know and just basically just sort of set it up where it's like this is what's going to happen to him over the next six years and that's where the episode ends and this way we're all caught up because honestly it would be way too hard to jump from like you know a rick grimes six years ago and then like the next scene it cuts to michonne six years later and then like we see michonne doing stuff this and that and then it cuts back to you know rick six years ago like it would just be way too much to handle like that so that's why i say hold off on on michonne that's already going to be exciting in itself you know to have her meeting with with people just to have her you know talking about rick this and that save that for episode two you want to save some of these reveals here in this first episode i think what you really should establish is rick grimes waking up in this new world basically um what's happening next can he get back to his family he's gonna find out pretty quick that he can't and you know just what happens to him next and we'll talk about that right away but i think they need to explore basically what happens over that certain time period and then maybe in the end and we'll talk about that right away 
but he's basically sent to the health and welfare complex or he's doing manual labor. And he's sentenced to that for six years, six, seven, eight years, however long it's been. And so he's literally been doing that the entire time, which when you pick up in episode two, we'll see Rick, you know, maybe he has long hair, a long beard or something like that. And he's just been doing stuff for a long time because he will not adapt to the Commonwealth ways or not Commonwealth, but the Pacific Republic ways. And then we start to see some Michonne stuff. And then it's like, oh, these are these are the two characters in this in the same timeline. And then the story sort of begins, right? We get the backstory. We get what we would have gotten that first movie in the first episode. And again, I think this first episode should be titled Years Gone By because the, the pilot episode to The Walking Dead was titled Days Gone By. I remember when The Walking Dead was ending, I wanted the final issue to be called Years Gone By, or at least maybe it was Rick's final episode. It was around there. I kept saying that, and obviously they never used it. I think for this, it makes sense because they're going to be jumping forward however many years, right, into the future. I I think, yeah, title it Years Gone By. I think it would be absolutely amazing. I think people would really freak out. The second thing I want to bring up here is I think they really need to focus on his reaction to surviving the bridge explosion. You know, like, first of all, just be like, how the hell did I survive that? How did I end up here? I want those, like, real-time reactions to things like that. Because in that helicopter, we saw his reaction to seeing Jadis. We saw him open his eyes. He saw Jadis and then Space Junk plays, right? I mean, I don't think he heard Space Junk in that scene, although that would be really cool. But honestly, I don't think he's even going to remember anything that happened there. Honestly, I feel like to him, it's pr- it was probably all a dream. But when he wakes up, I think he should wake up in like a hospital room. And then he's just, I think you should sort of have similar things play out to the very pilot episode. Obviously, things are going to be different. The hospital is going to look very, very different. If anything, you might get a similar shot to like when he's lying in bed there things are fine then he looks over to his right and he'll see a flower that's maybe not dead but is very much alive and people have been like changing the water feeding it and whatnot and then he's just kind of wondering like what the hell is happening here where am i and i think it would be cool to see him get out of the bed and then just like leave his hospital room and kind of explore the hospital a little bit but it'll be very different to obviously days gone by where in that episode it was everything was completely dead, right? Everything was destroyed. We saw like uh, don't open dead inside. I think it would be cool if obviously we're not going to get anything. And again, I don't really want them to do too many similarities here because you don't want them to be like copying for the sake of copying. You want some more original stuff here. But I, I think more of just the reaction of like he's walking around in the hospital and people are just kind of like doing, you know, like you see nurses at the desk, see nurses walking around and he's kind of like, what the hell is happening? And I think it would be really cool if honestly, for a split second when he wakes up, if he thinks, wait, did I dream all that? Was that was the zombie apocalypse literally like fake? Because it might seem like that when he first wakes up and he walks out, like he might just like he might be on his own when he walks out there, he sees everything operating normally. The world's pretty much like back to normal. Honestly, to him, he might be like, "Did like what just happened? Like, how long have I been out? Have I been in a coma for this long?" Again, because if you remember years ago, there were so many theories on on, on like the Rick coma idea, right? Where it was going to end with everything being a dream. I think it would be funny if it's if they sort of played with that idea here a little bit. Maybe he gets to the point where he actually almost leaves the hospital when he's outside the hospital and it's like super bright or something like that, and he's looking outside. Maybe he sees that everything's normal and you see the the, the Civic Republic. Everything is just, you know, people are doing their daily jobs. It's and that. And he's wondering, what the hell happened? And like, is, have I literally been dreaming everything? And then maybe he gets knocked out or something like that right there. And then he wakes up back in, in, in his hospital room. And then we see Jadis and stuff. And then it's sort of like, oh, yeah, th- that wasn't a dream. Because it, it would be, again, seeing the Civic Republic, seeing that state of the world, you know, where things are basically normal, just like our, our world is going to be shocking for Rick because he hasn't seen that yet. I wish The Walking Dead explored that a lot more with with a lot of our characters, you know, and their reactions to the Commonwealth. I think they they didn't do a great job at that because I wanted to see their reactions more to to seeing how everything operates, but you know, they they jump forward in time. They just kind of they gave everything to Eugene and stuff, which was was really cool, but I want to see Daryl react to that, right? So I think it, it would be really important to see Rick sort of reacting to that here. And then this way, you know, you sort of get that introduction, you sort of get Rick's reaction to what the hell's going on. And I think as you know, from a writer's perspective, when you do that, you're giving the audience a chance to sort of reconnect with the character and the mindset of that character. And then I I think, you know, after that happens or whatever happens, you should have Jadis come back and sort of explain what's going on, right? 
just explain the events of of this and that we did this and then you know she should let him know what's up you know like we helped you out like i i did this i saved your life but now you're gonna have to do this which obviously rick's gonna have a big issue with because he's not gonna want to stay here he wants to go home to his family he's probably wondering well there is a walker horde there like what the hell happened like, i i have to go back and see my family which obviously that's not going to happen. And then that's where I think you start to get into some of the more specific things with the Civic Republic storyline. And obviously Rick at this point is going to be super weak to even do anything. He's not going to fight back. I think he'll try. That leads me to my third point here is I, I really think that you need to bridge the six year time jump here really well. And I think an easy way to do that is just with episode one, just like kind of explaining what Rick's been up to up until you do that six year time jump. And that's what I mean. I don't see Rick adapting to the, the, the civic Republic's ways. I apologize if I keep saying the Commonwealth, cause I just keep mixing them up right now, but I don't think he's going to be adapting to the civic Republic ways. I don't see him just being like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to be a soldier or whatever. He's just not that character. He really is. And, and I know if they threaten his family, this and that, maybe things will be different, but I, I just don't see him doing that. And, and if anything, he'll be forced to do manual labor and he'll be sent to the health and welfare complex. That's sort of where I see it. Because again, the health and welfare complex is, it's a jail basically, but it's also sort of a brainwashing station, right? We saw Elizabeth Kublik going there. There's another character in season one of World Beyond who went there. Basically, it's once you're ready to serve, you're going to serve. You'll you'll be allowed out. And obviously, they have a lot of protocols that can determine whether or not you're able to serve or, or you're not lying or this and that. And so I think it makes a lot of sense. And so I think he'll be sent into some sort of program where he has to do manual labor or do other things. And I really think that's going to be basically what he's been doing for six, seven or eight years. And I know some people are going to have some issues with this, you know, if they do do a time jump here in this episode, because people wanted to explore more of that storyline for a while, right? They want to see more from that. The thing is, is like, again, like I'll, I'll go back to my original point that I made earlier in this video. You can't really have episode one or any episode for that matter focused on what Rick's been doing six years ago. And then when that scene's over, the next scene focuses on Michonne doing something, something else, you know, in, in the current timeline. It's so much stuff. I think the audience is going to get very, very confused or it's going to feel confusing. I'm not saying the audience is, is going to be that confused by it, but it's going to feel confusing because you're going to be questioning the timeline and it's going to feel so out of place and not like the characters could ever really find each other here. And from my experience, they don't do a lot of things like that. So I think it just makes a lot of sense. Have this first episode, title it Years Gone By, and focus, you know, just on what Rick's been up to this entire time, his immediate reaction to things, you know, just where his mind is at, basically. And then jump forward six, seven, eight years, however long it's been. Episode two, we can see a totally different looking Rick where he has a beard and long hair and stuff. I think it would be really cool. I think that that'd be a really awesome way to structure it. And this way you're sort of focusing on Rick and what he's been up to basically then, right? Like, what's his mindset at, at now? And then you cut to Michonne, and then it's all about her trying to find Rick and just sort of, you know, she's meeting these new people. How is she going to survive in these situations? Another thing that I really want to see is, you know, besides all the beginning stuff that I've been talking about, you know, like for a lot of the plot for episode one, is just like how Michonne finds Rick. Because it can't be that easy. You know, she found that group, but like, yeah, she found that group. And so, like, what is there going to be someone in that group that just knows Rick at like, you know, she'll be like, yeah, I'm searching for my husband. He, he, he's he been missing this and that. His name was Rick. Rick Grimes. Do you know him? And then some guy's like, oh, yeah, yeah. He's my buddy, Rick. He He's at a local bar at the Civic Republic or, or, or CRM. Um, Here, here's some directions. Like, it's not going to be that easy it has to be a struggle to find them because that's the most exciting part here and i think that's the main reason why when you know everyone started saying it was a limited series only six episodes people started to get really worried and, and sort of upset about it was because like it was just gonna happen so fast like episode one would you even focus on what rick's been doing for those last six years or are you just gonna get to it super fast episode two you know it this happens or, or maybe we focus on michonne in three we get a reunion and then four and five it's them versus the civic republic and then what are you supposed to have their reunion with daryl and all of them in episode six like it would have just been way too much it's not worth it and the walking dead has never told a story like that so that's like that's clue number one like that's that's how we know this series is going a lot longer besides obviously official sites confirming that like just, if you just focus on the story alone there's way too much to tell here and so that's why i say the michonne you know search for rick has to be honestly 
I know seeing Rick and stuff is going to be exciting and fun, and I'm not taking anything away from that. But Michonne searching for Rick is going to be, I think, the part that is so exciting. Because to, to Rick, he's not going to be searching for Michonne. Because to him, unless he finds out some sort of information that Michonne's nearby. But like to him, it's going to be like, well, Michonne's in Alexandria. My family's in Alexandria. And I know they're safe there, basically. Maybe he wonders from time to time if they're still alive. Maybe there's that worry that the Civic Republic has done something to them. But it's basically going to be that. Like, Rick is just going to be like, I have to do this, this and that. And we'll see where, where he's at. Michonne's going to be the one that finds clues and information that gets her closer to Rick. And that's the part that is going to be exciting because of that eventual reunion and it's going to build and build and build. Rick's not going to know where Michonne is, but we're watching Michonne's story. We're going to know she's like super nearby, like she's in a certain location. They're about to reunite and just, yeah, the hype for that's going to be really nuts. There's also the cell phone thing, which I, I, I don't want it to be a big part of the story. But I would like it to be a scene where it just sort of explains something. Because if you remember, Michonne found that that phone with sort of a picture of her on it and Judith. I, I want to know why that happened. Like, was that a threat? Rick's boots were also on that boat. So why? I mean, it's not like his other outfit was, or not his other outfit, but the one he was wearing when he was taken away. That wasn't there. So it's, you know, obviously he probably could have changed it to another outfit and then was still wearing his boots sort of thing. But I would want this whole scene to be addressed because it's a scene that, I mean, you find his boots on a boat. Like what? Like, wh like what was he doing on this boat? And was it a boat or was it a submarine? I can't remember exactly, but like that, that's a, that is something they need to explain. They need to explain who drew that. I mean, obviously we're, we're, we're all sort of assuming it's Jadis. Maybe it was Jadis. But it could be someone else as well, because, again, there's going to be a lot of new characters here, right? There's going to be a lot of new characters. And speaking of Jadis, she needs to play a big part in this first season. She really does. I want to see a lot more from her character. She's going to be, you know, she's basically going to be the enemy, if you think about it. Like, I know she helped Rick out, but she helped Rick out so that she could sort of survive and get a certain life. Like, she traded him in. So that she can get that higher class position within the Civic Republic. And we saw on World Beyond that it actually worked. And so obviously that in that first episode, it's going to be pretty predictable as to what happens to her. But once they jump forward six, seven, eight years, that's where things are going to be very different, right? Because when they jump forward, we're going to see Jadis, I'm assuming after World Beyond. That's likely where a lot of this is going to take place. And just, yeah, where do you go from there, right? And so, yeah, I just really wanted to focus on on the Rick and Michonne television show here on season one, you know, primarily on episode one. And I wanted to focus on a lot of those elements there and what I think should happen. Obviously, you know, I think it'd be fun to look back in like a little over a year once we watch the episode and to be able to say like, oh, did this actually happen? But that's, this is kind of my my idea here. And I, I think that the, these are things that they should address here because they're things that, you know, we're, we're sort of wondering about. Like, are you going to start the show with Rick basically in our current timeline? No, you can't do that. There's just a lot of things that they need to address. And, I, you know, that that's what's going to make for a, a very exciting season one. And I, I just can't wait. So definitely post all your thoughts down below. I actually wanted to mention one thing here really quick, and that is that New York Comic Con is is going to have a panel or the walking is going to have a panel there at new york comic con on october 8th so we could learn a lot more details obviously by then that's going to be the day before we watch episode two or not episode two i guess technically episode 19 i guess for amc plus viewers so we could get some more information there i also wanted to say as well that there was going to be a big live event obviously for the walking dead's finale which is airing on november 20th when you, when you actually go, like, based off of the week-to-week -week sort of releases here, obviously on October 2nd, I believe we're getting episode 17 and 18 for AMC+. Plus, so we're always going to be a week ahead for AMC Plus viewers. But if you watch it on cable, like, obviously you're watching 17 on October 2nd, on October 9th is 18, and then you just sort of count down the weeks. Episode 24 is on November 20th. And so, you know, because they're having a live event that same night, I actually wonder if they are going to hold off on the very final episode for that for that week, because it would make no sense for us who have AMC Plus to watch it on November 13th. And then for people to pay so much money and stuff like that to go to this event to watch it on the 20th when everyone's going to be like, well, it's already out on AMC Plus, so I'll just watch it there. Right. So I actually think because of this event here, that sort of hints that I think they're going to hold off on the finale and we're all going to watch it on November 20th together. 
And um, yeah, it's definitely going to be a lot of fun. I'll definitely do some Twitch streaming then. And then I'll, I'll sort of, I'll live stream my reaction. I think I'll have a, a face cam and everything. I'm, I'm going to do a big setup for that night. I'm definitely excited. That's like literally less than three weeks away. But anyways, like I said, I'm going to leave it here. So definitely post all your thoughts down below. Hope you guys all enjoyed the video. The Walking Dead is, is here in about what, 30, 32 days now. Hope you guys all enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.